Okay. Um, ordinary differential equations, also called ODEs, will form um, the subject of today's discussion. It is my plan to discuss the kinds of questions one will expect to meet as they open any assessment for this module. First things first, it's very important that um, one understands how to solve um, systems involving um, a set of differential equations um, and transforming them into what you call the triangular systems. I know it's a very easy concept, but obviously it is very examinable and there's no doubt that you one who's going to meet a system of differential equations um, to be solved. And now it is, this system is equivalent to both the following triangular systems, um, given the three systems above separately state with, with complete justifications, your strategy in solving them completely. Okay. Um, we are getting started. Okay. We are most certainly getting started. And let's see what we can do. Right. So obviously now this system here. Right. Here we go. Right. We note that uh, the system actually can be actually written in operator notation. And if the system can be written in operator notation, um, we can label the equations. Normally, this is how the solution is written. Okay, the solution obviously goes as follows. So we label the first equation. And the first equation is the D minus two. <laughs> okay. This is a very interesting notation we use here, the D notation, the D operator. Right, so we have D minus two, obviously acting on X as an operator. Okay, somebody once argued that this obviously acts as a number. Right, and then you have twice D operating on Y. And these operators themselves, this differential equation is this. Okay, we're just, what are we discussing here? Okay, it's not about the question, but we're just try, uh, discussing triangular systems. Um, right, and the next thing is now we just copy the bottom one. Then we just learn how to transform these into a triangular system. Um, the kind of question we are discussing, the problem does not quite uh, matter. Okay, so we have 3D here, minus one. And uh, it is actually operating on Y and this result is zero. Um, we then normally label our equations on the left hand side. So that is equation one and this one here is equation two, right? So these become um, simultaneous equations and I'm gonna reveal them on the next page, right? So if I reveal them therefore on the next page, we obtain the following. Okay, our objective, first things first, will be to obtain um, this particular, the first, um, this particular representation as a triangular system. Okay, I'm gonna move to the next page or next slide and say, we remember from what I've written, okay? We have D minus two, I'm just writing them here for us to uh, manipulate uh, this uh, particular system of differential equations. We have this, so then we have twice, D, Y, and this is twice uh, uh, minus four E to the twice T. And then we have twice D minus three. And then we have um, X plus three uh, D minus one um, into Y which equals zero. Once again, we remember that this is equation one and that remains equation two and we have that. Okay, this becomes multinational equations and therefore um, we state a particular set of rules. So, yeah, normally you can write draw lines or you might just write in words and say, what is the objective at this point? Um, is to actually eliminate a given variable, so we can actually try to eliminate 
um, or multiply a given equation by two. Okay, so if we multiply the second equation by two, so if you say equation two times two, or two times equation two, right, what that gives us, for instance, is would be 4D minus six. Okay, it's just elimination of this, okay. And then if it's multiply that, it becomes 6D minus two. Okay, we're just discussing the triangular systems. As said already, this is a very, very popular school method of solving um, linear systems, what you call simultaneous equations um, in school. All right, we get that, this one here. And so if you look at these very carefully, we have these particular equations, um, these particular three equations, so we can call this one equation three, if you like. Equation three. Okay. And so if we take equation one and we multiply it by, by three, if we eliminate why? Because looking at this here, the D operator acting on Y has been totally removed. So yeah, that's what we're trying to remove. We multiply this one by two, and therefore obviously we just want to make these the same. So multiply by two, multiply the top one by three. So we're gonna say equation e equation four. Obviously, equation four is the same as equation one multiplied by what? Multiplied by three. Giving us three D, multiplying that one there minus six. Um, X multiplying by three becomes six D Y. Multiplying by three becomes six minus twelve E to the twice. Okay, if need to be one, you can even draw lines to make things a little easier and a bit more organized. Um, right, at this point, uh, we realize the fault that we want to eliminate y from this. So if we want to eliminate y from this, we can perform subtraction of the two equations. So we can then say... Um, doesn't really matter what you do. For instance, we can then say the equation we got, we subtract from um, the first one. So we can say equation three minus four, or the other way around. Now you can say four minus three. Right, doesn't really matter. Okay, let me just say four minus three. Well, all the, you can say three minus one, doesn't matter. Right, um, let me say four minus three. You subtract the second one from the first one. So you subtract this one from that one. So you can say, yeah, doesn't matter quite, anyway. Um, Okay, the result is going to be the same. You can just simplify and divide through by negative one, etc. If that is going to be different from what was given on the other side. Right, so if you're going to say four minus three, let's check what we actually get at this point. You can write at the bottom here to create some order. So, for example, what does these give us? Okay, so we have exactly this and we have that. Right. Right, which one is neater? Allow me to say three minus, to say three minus four, so that, okay, I'm justifying that, so that now you, because it's easy to say four, my, four D minus three D, and then you get a D, All right? So if you then say three minus four, it makes the whole thing neat. If you say three minus four, okay, once again, yeah, but that is neat, you'll forgive me. Three minus four. Because if I say three minus four, then it's going to be exactly four D minus three D. Okay, so that's going to be exactly D, which is meter. And then obviously if you have the six, 
minus uh, minus into plus uh, three there. So that's going to be a big zero. Okay, so that's going to be x like this. Okay, um, so you continue. We continue. Right, so next we solve, we actually look at the eliminations methods here. Um, right, we get this, yeah. And then now we look at the y's. Okay, we already said three minus four, it's meter. So if you look at the 6d minus, 6d is gonna be zero. Okay, interesting. Uh, thing here. So we have this one here minus nothing. That is a constant subtracting sub, being subtracted from D. So and that gives us actually minus twice Y. Okay. And therefore now we have zero minus six, which is exactly minus six. Okay. Zero minus into minus 12, which is 12 E um, to the twice T. Okay. So we get this. Okay, awesome. Um, right, so we have the following thing. When we get to this point, we have this particular equation. And this particular equation, we can give it a name, a label, Call it equation five, okay? We call it equation five. We're just discussing triangular systems once again. And uh, now at this point, we can easily be in a position to make Y the subject of the equation in whatever form, okay? The easiest way to make Y the subject of the equation to transpose the Y to the right, making it positive and then now you have um, the D operator on X. This one is brought to making it plus the 12 becoming negative twice T. Okay. At this point, uh, we can divide through by two and getting the X uh, plus three, dividing that six divided by two. And then you divide the six, 12 by, by two, you give us a six. And this is e to the twice t, okay? Right, so that's what we are able to obtain. And this is what we get. This is exactly what we are able to get at this point. Right. So we perform further substitution. Right, performing further substitution. So now, if you substitute um, this particular equation, you can give it a name. Okay, substituting, you can use that. Substituting the last equation into the first. equation, we obtain, okay, just a roadmap, take this one, which is y equals half d, I'm just putting them next adjacent each other here, uh, plus three minus six, okay, we're just looking at the roadmap on triangular systems. And where is the first one? The first equation, obviously, is exactly this one there. And we're going to write it there, uh, obviously. Okay. Right. If we write it here, it is uh, exactly d minus 2 x plus twice dy, um, which is 2 minus 4e the twice t. Okay, so this is equation one. So what we do is we perform substitution into this one. And if we do that, we obtain d minus two um, operating on x. 
Mm. Okay, this is a funny operator because I uh, was discussing this and somebody, one professor suggested that obviously it is not a good operator. This one, it actually, sometimes it acts as a number instead of being an operator. So the professor's argument was, what's the point of this method actually? It's very, very ineffective. Okay. But now we have the dx plus, then we have plus 3 minus 6e to the plus t. Obviously, we're mingling the operator with numbers. Um, It's d minus 2. But the understanding is obviously that if this is written, that d is an operator. So um, we need to separate entities of the same kind in mathematics. So the 2, obviously, is not just 2, but it is 2 times the identity operator. Okay. So... It has to be taken in that context. So, yeah, we're substituting the y, this whole y expression into this plot. It we close like this. And after it's been closed, it is actually therefore equals 2 minus 4e to the twice t. Okay. We're good. And we get this equation. We can call it equation 6. Doesn't quite matter. Right, so we then say, call this equation 6. Call this equation 6. Now we then say from, from 5. Yes, from 5. From 5 and 6. Okay, let's see how the triangular system is going to be region out of that obviously we have achieved so from five and six right so we have the actually the triangular system right what is the triangular system in the required format what is the triangular system in the required format it is the top one that we just got it is actually the d minus six yeah d minus 2, you close like this. Okay, just all these here, we're copying it. We multiply through by the d add like terms to be smarter because we still can perform further algebraic manipulations on um, the differential equation 6. Right, so we have 3 minus that twice t, and this is this. Okay, this one is the equation 6, and we have equation 5. Right, obviously, in comparison with what was supposed to get as the objective, the triangular system in which the y, um, the d operating on y has been totally eliminated. And we have now equation five, which is actually the d operator on x minus twice y, which is minus six plus 12 e to the twice t. Okay, this is exactly what we have. And then I'm going to say, um, um, this um, simplifies to this system simplifies to okay so obviously that system sort of simplifies to something let's check okay we're going to simplify it pretty fast now this is how we simplify it if you multiply the highest degree, d times d, it's d squared. But it's 2d times that. Sorry, half cancels, giving us d squared. Okay, so we have the d squared. Then we have also... Now, yeah, that's the d squared there. Then here you have, you'd have what? Then you'd have um, the d as well. So that's going to be like 6d, and there's going to be a d here, and so we can just write in the meantime these together with that, so that becomes like a d. Okay, this one is going to be zero. d on 3 is going to be zero. So, but yeah, but this one is going to survive. This is going to survive d on x. And then now there is minus 2. This minus 2, and you have the operator on x. 
Okay, this is too congested, I agree. And then now the right hand side is exactly what? Okay, now the right hand side is going to be obtained from some of the things here. Like D on three is going to be zero because three is a constant. And then now you have D on the minus six e to the two t. So the t is going to two is going to come down, which is minus twelve. Okay, if you have actually a minus twelve and it's multiplied by two, which is a minus twenty-four. If you go to the other side, it becomes a 24 minus 4, which is a 20. But it finds a 2 there. So it therefore becomes 20e, the twice t. Then at the bottom, you have the d operator on x minus twice y, which is exactly this equation, is actually equal to minus 6, 12e to the twice t. All right, this is too obvious, but we just need to just mention what we did to obtain this result. What we did was to most certainly um, just eliminate the operator on Y because we had the D operator on Y and we totally eliminated that and after we eliminated that, we had only the D operator on X left. And in particular, if you look at this, D operator on X minus 2Y equals minus 6, 12, E to the twice T. Um, it's exactly this, okay? With the exception of the fact that we have the minus 6 plus the 12. And here they have the 12 minus that. And they have the D squared plus D minus 2, 2 plus 20 T. It's exactly this. So the next thing is... Okay, the, the next objective is to try and, and eliminate the next variable. So we remove the D operator on X and then just left, we're left with D operator on Y. So that's going to give us another triangular system. Obviously now, given it, the, the three systems above, um, according to this, given the three systems above, state with uh, complete justifications, your strategy in solving them. Okay, obviously the strategy has been outlined in terms of the operations that were followed. I know that um, it is just a warm up exercise, this one, um, but we're gonna just uh, in the least amount of steps. We're gonna write this equation on the next slide and, and just to remove. I know that this is one of the easiest modules you can come across. Okay, so. I'm going to write down the equation, the, the, the given system. Right, so it has equation one and it has equation two and it is as follows. It is D minus two. Okay, well, just elimin eliminating Y now and um, with two DY, which is two, minus 4e to the twice t, which is twice d minus 3, um, like this. And then now, which is the operator on y. OK. The next thing is now we need to remove x and be left with y, d operate on y. Right, obviously these become sort of uh, the regular equations and therefore what do we do at this point? Right, so we can easily do that. Okay, I can change the strategy and just draw some lines here like this and then say, okay, we want to eliminate x, dx, and be, be able to live. So at this point now, there is a d here. So we can just multiply this one by a straight 2. So we're going to say the number 2 times equation 1. Right. So if we do that, um, it's going to be exactly twice d minus 4 operator on x. And then we multiply, it becomes 4dy 
which it becomes exactly 4 e 8 e to the twice that right so at this point i want to eliminate this one so clearly we can see that we can just write the two out okay i like just writing this out so that we can have our pair of equation differential equations and then we can be able to perform the elimination because this is just the elimination method, eliminating one variable and um, obviously leaving the next variable. Okay, we have this. And sometimes I have this here. And then now this one here, we have, so we can say these particular equations in any order. You can say this bottom one minus uh, the top one. So or the top one, yeah, it's needed to say the top one minus the bottom because now you're going to have the 4D minus 3D, which is going to give it D. Otherwise, you're going to have a negative D. Okay, it doesn't matter. So we can say 2 times 1 minus... Hello? Yes, please. So yeah, this is 1. Yes, 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 Simon. So this is too obvious. Why do you uh, multiply? Why do you... Uh, why do you multiply everything by two? Okay, that's a good question. Why do I multiply everything by two? I'm multiplying everything by two because we want to remove this operator here. Um, we want to remove the operator on x. So we could multiply by negative two still, but I just decided to multiply this one by two so that it could have two d and two d and the d the two d's can cancel out you know that became the objective but decide to multiply therefore this one by two giving 2d minus 4d plus 4dy uh plus 4 minus 8 etc obviously the next the, what is the objective the objective is to remove the d operator on x and we are in that direction sort of making progress because if you then take this equation right now, and then you take this one minus this one, we'll then have 2d minus 2d, zero. And then now you have minus four plus three, which is minus x. Right, so like we saw here, like we saw here when we just hit the Y left, so we're gonna have exactly the same thing. So this is just gonna be a minus X, okay? Because these two cancel out, you see these minus that, and then you're left with this one, minus four plus that, which is minus X. And then now you have this one here, which is 4D minus 3D, Okay, so that becomes a plus D. And then obviously now it's this one minus that, which is going to make this one a plus. A plus one. D operator on Y. And then we have um, this one, the, everything here minus zero, which is just all that. Okay. Let's see now where we, how far we have come. We have come exactly to this point here. At this point, you can decide to call this differential equation. So multiplying, and write that one down. Multiplying both, both sides by minus one for argument's sake here. We get x minus, okay, d plus 1. d operator on y, which is 8, e to the twice t plus 4. Okay, now we have got that one, and this one is sort of an achievement for us. Let me just put it in sort of a block here. Put it in a block, in a red block like this. Okay. We got one achievement. And then now, after we got this achievement, we are very close. Why? Because there's this equation that we're supposed to get. X minus D plus 1, H minus that. 
Okay. Uh, All hello. right. The four is negative. Because you multiply by negative one. So the eight is positive and the four is negative, right? That's what you need to say. Um, okay, any comments? <laughs> Maybe there's something else you obse you're observing? Uh, yes, I was going to make that comment. It should have been minus. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, right. Um, I'm just making reference as well to where we're supposed to get to. So yeah, it's exactly this one. Um, that's why I, I sort of multiplied through by negative. So um, you have the x minus d plus 1, 8 e to the 2t minus 4. So it's exactly this one. And then now we have to achieve another equation. We have already achieved the equation in particular. So the other equation we need to actually obtain is the equation that is a substitution equation. We've learned this. We've learned this from the initial operation. So this one is obtained by performing a substitution into one of the differential equations. We can substitute into any of them, preferably in the very first one, like we did before. So we can give this one a name and call it three. And then we'll proceed to say substitute. Right, so we'll say substitute three into, okay, it's not nice to substitute yet perhaps. Okay, let me just perform a little bit of algebra on it. Make, make X a subject straight away. Right, so let's just do that. If you make x a subject straight away, you get x equals uh, d plus 1, operator on y. And then now, obviously, it is 8e to the twice t minus 4. OK, yeah. And then at this point, uh, we can give it, let's give it the name equation 3. It's better we label this one because yeah, this one is OK, but this one x is already the subject. And then at this point, we proceed to say substitute. Substitute 3 into 1. OK, there it is. And then if we do exactly that, that, that one, we're going to have the following. OK, we're going to have the following. So wherever there is x, we put that. So that's going to be d minus 2. Wherever there is x, what do we put? We put this giant equation, t plus 1. And then y plus 8e to the 2t minus 4. Okay, yeah. Plus twice d operator on y. And this whole thing is actually equal to 2 minus 4 e to the twice t. Okay. Okay, now we have got the triangular system already, but let's just, the, the practice is to add like terms and multiply out, uh, distribute, etc. So let's perform some basic distribution. Okay, to distribute here, obviously we use the distributive law. We take this, okay, a couple of ways. You can sort of allow d to operate on this and then minus two to operate on this. Or we let these operate, okay? Um, sort of um, d operate, d can be allowed to operate on d plus one, doesn't matter. Y here, and then plus eight e to the twice t minus four, okay? Is this now on d minus two on this as well, which is uh, d plus one, and then y, okay, like this, and then plus 8e to the twice t minus 4. Okay, and then now you have the plus twice d um, on y, which equals 2 minus 4e to the twice t. Right. We are back now, right now. Okay, now we actually allow this. So this is going to be like dd, which is like d squared. And it's the highest. There's no other d squared that's going to come up here. So this is the only d squared. Let's just write it down like that. And then after we've got the d squared, let's look at the d's now. 
this and and the one it's gonna be like a d obviously on y so it's gonna have a d here and then now there's gonna be a minus 2d on y here and then ma ah this one now it's gonna be a 2d on y minus 2d on y a 2d on y so it's gonna be zero we're just gonna be left with the d on y so it's gonna be plus d all right so we're done with um, what could emerge as a D. Now, dealing with sort of the, the constants, okay, let's see now this we're done with. And then now there's going to be a minus 2 with the Y, and it's the only one. And then now these are on the operator, um, are, are operating on Y, this operator is operating on Y, and then now we have the D here on this. Right, so this is exactly 16. And then now, this is also exactly minus the 16. E, so it's going to actually come down to zero. And then what else have we got? Right, so there's a minus four. And then now you have uh, this one here, minus two. Okay, so you're this is going to become a zero because d on minus four is going to be zero and then it's going to be minus eight all right and then the minus eight uh, is going to go to the other side and it's going to become um oh sorry this and this is going to be plus eight so that it becomes minus six and then we have minus four e to the twice t Okay, we write this guy here, the green one. I can write, I can write it in green again. So we have this one. We write it in this form. Um, we write it into form x minus into d plus one. Right, and then it is op, op operating on y, and then we have eight e to the two t minus four. Okay, we've learned the triangular system and it's just about learning the methods and obviously being able to use them in the event that a different question, you can always expect a, a different question to be provided. This kind of a module is always a walk in the park. It's one of those modules where you can get a straight A if somebody uses that terminology of straight A's. So, so this one is a, is a triangular system. Or not just is a triangular system, but is the triangular system that the examiner gave to us in the beginning. Okay, so is the triangular system. Is the triangular system as anticipated? Okay, is the triangular system as anticipated or as required? Is required. All right, so we are in celebration mode because we have got it. We have got it. We have achieved the result here. But now we are not uh, uh, quite done as yet because the question was, we got the triangular systems, but we're not done. Okay, because it said show that the system, this is equivalent to both the triangular systems. We have shown that. Okay, given the three <clears throat> systems above separately, stayed with complete justification and your strategy in solving them completely. We have actually done that. Right, now there is um, a small remark that it's necessary to give. Okay, and, and the small remark that is necessary to give also in the exams as well is as follows. Right. Okay, now, the system we have got, I want to comment on the nature of this system. 
Okay, I want to speak about degenerate systems and would say not or non degenerate, um, not degenerate. Okay. Not degenerate systems. Okay, not degenerate systems. Okay, so let's just continue and look at these carefully, carefully, carefully. All right, all right, all right, all right. So let's continue. All right, so we have this. Uh, hello? Yes, yes, Saman. Uh, what is a degenerate and not degenerate system? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. So there are systems that actually have unique solutions and there are those that do not have unique solutions. So a system that tends to have a unique solution, um, obviously it's said to be, for example, um, is not degenerate because it has a unique uh, solution. Okay, so I, I'm obviously I'm going to comment on this. For instance, from from one and two above, from equations one and two above, we can be able to. We, we must comment on this when we have um, systems of equations. Okay, I'm just going to um, cite the systems here, which is exactly d minus 2 operating on x plus twice d into 1 which is 2 minus 4e to the twice t twice d minus 3 x plus 3d You have the operator on y, which is zero. Okay. Let's look at this particular system here and comment on the nature of this particular system here. Okay, right, we will say Okay, from one and two we have there's something we call the delta. And delta now is formed by okay, we use this all the time in and you sort of D, even just delta, obviously we use the delta Greek symbol so that we have the D minus two, and then we have the twice D minus three, and then we have twice d, and then we have 3d minus 1. OK, we've just taken the coefficients here of this. We've just taken the coefficients here of that exactly. Um, all right, so I want us to analyze this very carefully because it is very, very significant for us to um, Understand this. Let us find the determinant of this. This obviously refers to the determinant of the. This is sort of the determinant of the coefficient matrix. Okay, when you have the two d, uh, the d minus two, etc. And then now this is how we study um, degenerate and, and systems that are not degenerate. Okay, let's find the, the determinant is d minus two, d minus one. Minus, minus twice d minus 3 into twice d. OK, we use this if we put into practice methods like Kramer's rule. Okay, we're going to use Kramer's rule very often when dealing with these kinds of problems. OK, because Kramer's rule, we might need to solve for x only or we might need to solve for y only, but we need to solve for both x and y in problems like this generally. 
Right, if we therefore have this here, what is all this? So this one here, the D and the 3D is going to be 3D squared. So this is going to be 3D squared minus D minus 6D plus 2 minus 4D squared plus 3 plus 6D. Yeah, plus six D, which is equal to, so now at this point, uh, when you have this, you have the three D squared minus four D squared, which is um, actually, okay. So we can start with the two, doesn't really matter. Right, we can start with the two, and then now we come to the D terms, so it's only just gonna be minus D because the minus six D and the six D go away. Um, and then now we have the 3d squared minus 4d squared, which is minus d squared. Uh, but clearly this is not equivalent to the zero operator um, because this is a linear combination of operators and therefore um, is not um, equal to the zero operator. And the conclusion so that um, we infer we infer that the system Oops, okay, but I'm right back. Right, we infer that the system, obviously the system of differential equations we given at the beginning, um, the system is not, I'm gonna make these capitals, it's not degenerate. Um, and hence, And hence, uh, has a unique, a unique solution. So in other words, uh, systems that are not degenerate have a unique solution. Otherwise, the system is actually degenerate if it does not have a unique solution. Okay, this is like a system of linear equations actually that we learn in linear algebra one and just linear algebra in general. So, um, right. But we're not done quite yet because for each triangular system, we can be in a position to show as well because that the triangular system is equivalent to the original system. So each triangular system, therefore, being equivalent to the former system, we have just performed elementary um, sort of raw operations by means of elimination. We call them elementary raw operations um, in in terms in, in in the event of in case of matrices. Okay, now I'll, I'll just mention this in conclusion. Right to say finally. Uh, let us consider, let us consider the what? The triangular, the triangular systems above. Okay, and, uh, and obviously we have uh, a triangular system in where the D operator um, x on x and and, and when where the d operator um, x on y. All right, so let me write this one first. d squared plus d minus two. This operator x on y, which is a uh, minus six minus four e to the twice t, which is x minus d plus 1, y, which is minus 4 plus 8, e to the twice t. Okay, let me just write this one. And on the other side, I'm going to write the other one we got. Okay, um, the other one, where the d operator operates on, on x. So this is when it operates on 
on y, okay? And then this, this other one where it operates um, on x, so it is d squared. So yeah, I just want to discuss the degeneracy um, in view of the um, triangular systems being obviously mathematically equivalent to the former system. Um, it's just that the system has been transformed to a triangular system. So, so you have minus 2y, which is 12e to the twice t minus 6. So now we can write the, the delta. Right, so we remember how we wrote the delta. So now we shall have the x and also the y. The x here, or the d operator operating on x here is actually obviously zero, um, but it is a one there. On y, it is uh, the d squared plus d minus two, and the bottom one is minus into d plus one. Okay, and then now we're gonna compute this one. Simultaneously, let me write the other delta for the other triangular system operating on x. Right, in which case uh, we have that the operator on x is the d squared plus d minus two. Operating on x is also just uh, the d here. Operating on y is zero, operating on y is this. So at this point, uh, this with that is zero. So that uh, you have zero minus into the d squared plus d minus two. Okay, and this is uh, the delta, which is uh, minus d squared minus d plus two. So in the end, therefore, this is not equal to zero. So you have this here, which is um, so you have d here, right? Okay. Sort of cross multiplication here is minus two, if you like. We're using what we call cofactor expansion. It's not just cross multiplication; it's cofactor expansion. I'm obviously. Strictly speaking, you have the D here with op operating on the zero. And then this is uh, minus twice D squared, minus twice D plus four and zero. But uh, this is not zero. It's not equal to the zero operator. And this is not equal to the zero operator. What is the meaning of this? It means what we got in the beginning is what we are getting now. <laughs> but now, if you look very carefully here, it is these two, if you, doesn't matter what you do, because it's minus d squared minus d plus 2. We can leave it like this and say it is not equal to 0. Okay, I'm going to say it is actually not equal to 0 here. But simultaneously, dividing through by 2 here is going to be minus that, minus the plus 2 is not equal to 0. Okay, this is just very powerful because it shows the accuracy of the mathematics and its consistency. But now we have that, this one operating on, on y, this operating on x, but we're getting now the delta that is equal in both instances. Um, and uh, now we can even compare it with this because it's minus d squared minus d plus two. So it doesn't matter where you calculate the uh, the um, the delta from, but we're getting the same expression from the original system to the triangular systems, and uh, they both uh, enhance both. Henceforth, we infer. We infer that um, the system the system is not degenerate.
and hence has a unique a unique solution. Okay, if this delta was zero, then the system was going to be degenerate. And if it's degenerate, then it means you do not have a unique solution. In view of the uniqueness of the solution and Kramer's rule that we often use to solve this. Okay, we're going to discuss that. Um, right. Okay, we're going to discuss that. Yeah. Okay, next question. Okay, I've made another question available um, for us to practice a little bit more. Um, obviously, in the next uh, question, we are going to solve this in detail because in the first question, we did not solve. We just expressed in triangular forms, um, in two equivalent triangular forms. Um, right, but at this point, now we're going to solve by using the elimination method, the operator method. Let's just uh, indulge and enjoy ourselves um, with solving this particular equation. And at this point, uh, we gonna solve this in detail and see how to solve. And we're gonna discuss the notion of what we call root vectors as well, and many other equivalent um, um, notions. Right, so what is easier to do at this point? Uh, we realize that we can just uh, remove the easiest one because this one operating on X1 is D squared, and this one is D operating on X2 is just D. So we can see clearly that we can just eliminate um, B operating on X2 easily, um, right? So yeah, it is just uh, otherwise uh, entirely up to us. So we can just be left with um, D operating on um, on X1 and now be in a position to solve that one. So let's get started. Just a mind map. Right, so... With that said, what do we do? Okay, we are here. And we're going to call this one equation one. And we're going to call this one equation two. And then we're going to say, we want to eliminate x2. Eliminating x2. Right, eliminating x2 is what we say. Right, so obviously at this point, uh, we have the 2d here. We just need to uh, multiply this particular one by 2. Right, and if you just multiply this particular one by 2, we have what is required. And then after that, we subtract the two equations. Right, so we're going to say two times equation two. Okay, you can write the first one first, doesn't matter. And then now, if we do that, uh, it's going to be exactly 4d, yeah, minus two. x1 4 minus twice d you multiply by 2 it becomes 10 okay this is what we are able to to get at this at this point And after we go to these at this point, uh, what can we actually be in a position to achieve? Right, if we wish to eliminate x2 all together, we can then multiply. Okay, let me change the strategy and do it this way so that we are very effective. It doesn't matter, but yeah, I want to put more operators at once. It said that we are very effective in our strategy. It doesn't really matter. But if we say eliminating X2 is a strategy, 
So we're going to take the first equation and multiply it by twice d, uh, like twice minus d. And then now we're going to multiply the first equation by, we want to eliminate x2, so we can just multiply it by 2 minus d. And then obviously then we'd have to multiply this one by twice d. So twice d times equation 2. Okay, if you multiply this one by this here, so it's going to be exactly 2 minus d. Yes, d squared plus 1. And then now we multiply this one as well um, by 2 minus d. And then it is x2. And then we multiply here. It becomes 2 minus d. T. Okay, this is effective. This is right to be just get rid of x2 altogether. You, you can see the approach being slightly different from the, that of the triangular system because we are trying to save time here, but we could do it like we did before. But yeah, we're trying to save time, make sure that x2 is out. But in the former triangular systems, we could have both in the same equation, um, like x and y. Right, so here now we multiply straight up actually by twice d. So it's going to be twice d minus 1. x1 minus, you multiply this one by twice d, which is x2, and then you multiply by twice d. Okay. So what do we get here? Okay, this is what we achieve. Now this one, we can give them big names. We can give them names and say, okay. We can call this one three and call this one four. Okay, if you look at now these two things, they're actually very much the same, except that, well, they even have the same sign. So X2 is out. So a more powerful bulldozer method than the first, the former triangular system method we used. Now, at this point, uh, we can just sub subtract the two equations in order. So we're going to say the first one minus the second one, we're going to say three minus four. Once again, you can say 4 minus 3, depending on, but yeah, the same thing. So, but now we can see that clearly x2 is out, and we're making significant progress. And then we're left with this. Okay, if we're left with the x1, okay, let me just minus uh, 2 minus d, and then we have uh, d squared plus 1, and we have x1, and we have minus this. Um, right, and so we have that. Okay, this minus that becomes zero, and then we have the top one, and then we have twice t minus twice d on five. Okay, <laughs> this is already zero, this, um, the d on five. So let's just do some basic arithmetic here, 2 times d squared, you can write twice d squared, 2 times 1, it's actually 2 minus d, and that is minus d cubed, minus d and 1 is actually minus d x1, and then we can multiply also here in terms of this, so if we multiply this, what do we get? Okay, I'm going to 
uh, just remove the x1 because this x1 x1 everywhere so i can just have a single x1 and just have the like terms edit 18. so you're going to have this here and then you're going to have minus 2d and that which is minus 4d squared which is uh, minus 4d squared plus twice the And then you have that. So, analyzing this, so you have 2 times 2t, which is 4t, minus the, the derivative of the t, of 2t, is just 2. So you can just write minus 2 there. And then here, this one is 0, because 5 is a constant. The derivative of the constant 5 is 0. Okay, now let's just uh, come to this one and write it properly. So it is minus d cubed, right? And then we have this and this, which is minus twice d squared, which is this and that. d cubed and minus twice d squared. Uh, okay, there is um, twice d minus d, which is d. Um, yeah, which is 4t minus, minus 2, okay? Okay, we have made progress in just one sort of systematic major transformation of this. We, we should have used the triangular, but yeah, this is just super, super powerful. Okay, and this is how we do it, if we have this system to solve. Okay, now, Let's write this one on the next page, which is minus d cubed minus 2d squared plus d plus 2 operating on x1, 4t minus 2. Right, taken from the other side is actually minus d cubed. We're just learning how to solve this. Okay, minus 2d squared plus d plus 2 is actually operating on t on x1. which is equal to 4t minus 2. Okay, so this one is solved in two stages. It's just a differential equation now. And so it's solved, uh, it's a third order differential equation, right? You, written in terms of the d operator, right? So we need to solve this one in using two, our two measure methods. We need to first find the auxiliary equation. So the auxiliary, Right, the auxiliary equation is what is the auxiliary equation? Is the equation that's written in terms of normally we use um, m straight away for the auxiliary. So this becomes like an m cubed. So you can write minus m cubed here, and this one becomes minus uh, 2 m squared, so the d becomes like an m, and then here it becomes plus m plus 2, and then this here is always, we, we, we form a homogeneous equation. So yeah, the so this auxiliary equation is of the homogeneous, we completely forget about these um, we're going to consider this later on. So we equate this to zero and we have that. Uh, at this point, we have m cubed plus twice m squared uh, minus m minus two equals zero. So which is m? Minus into m plus two. m plus two into m squared minus 1, m plus 2, into m minus 1, into m plus 1.
m m m minus one those are your roots okay the auxiliary equation is this one then you have the complementary function write the complementary function what is the complementary function the complementary function is obviously it's a function of x1 uh, a function of t this x1 a function of t and then we call it the complementary function subscript cf and this is actually the same as the following. Okay. So we just continue, please. I'm just uh, continuing now. So we have this one here. Okay, just one minute. Um, right, setting up my system just one, once more. <laughs> right, so we have the complementary function, which is actually this one here. And now because these are distinct roots, so we have, okay, in which case they can be distinct or they can be like, um, Okay, they can be the same. Okay, you can have like equal roots. So, but you can have distinct roots, in which case, in this case, we have distinct roots, so it's much easier. It's, it's common. And that's what so possibly we learn first. Uh, we learn this one. Um, and then um, we continue. We continue. Okay, the complementary function as it is given, it is C1 e to the minus 2t plus C2 e to the minus 2t, then we have minus t, constant 3 e to the t, like 1t, 1 times t, which is that. Obviously, we do this and we mention that were C1, C2, and C3, what do we call them? They are arbitrary constants. Um, right, so with these ones, C3 are arbitrary. Constants. Okay. So we have found the complementary function. And then after we've found this complementary function, we need to find uh, the particular solution. So, yeah. Let's find the particular integral. Right, so the particular the particular integral is given by right. So you have minus d cubed, minus twice d squared, plus d plus two, x1, 
which is 4t minus 2. And then now we have uh, seen that we can multiply through by negative 1. So that implies that we can have d cubed plus twice d squared minus d minus 2 with the operator x on x1. And then this becomes 2 minus 4t. like that. Okay, so you can write it exactly in that manner. Exactly in that manner there. Right. Okay, obviously this is a very, very subjective step. So you can write either like this or you can um, write, you can still continue with the minus. Now, you can, you need to factorize these. Let's factorize these. So you, well, you might just, uh, right uh, doesn't matter what you do you can take the inverse operator now taking the inverse operator means therefore you have x1 particular integral as a function of t is actually the same as 1 divided by d cubed plus 2d squared minus d minus 2. And then you have here, you can write minus 4t plus 2. Like this. Um, at this point, uh, this is too easy to factorize. Because uh, you can see that you can pull out d squared to getting d plus 2. Factor out negative 1, and you have this here. And uh, this here is the operator on minus 4t plus 2. In the denominator, you have d squared so you have this one here so We have this. Difference of two squares for the d squared minus one. So you have d minus one into d plus one, difference of two squares, and then you have d plus two. Okay, and you have minus 4t plus two, like this. Okay. Now they cut certain things. You need to always remember the Taylor series. No, Taylor, you can call it. There's different names, but Taylor is the most general term. So we use it here as one of the most powerful results. There are two of them. The first one. One is the high school one. One over R for the geometric series. 
1 over r plus 1 is 1 minus d plus d squared minus d cubed plus So, yeah, we're going to have this one here. So, which is 1 divided by? Okay, so we're going to use it first here on that one. So, using it on that one, then we're going to factor out the d plus 2. And then you have the d minus 1. All right, so this one, it's going to become, the one over d plus 1 is going to become 1 minus d plus d squared minus d cubed. Okay, we're just discussing how to solve now um, a system of two differential equations using the d operator methods. And then now you can write here minus 4t plus 2. Like this. Right. And then now we just uh, let this, these operate on this one. Okay, next page. So which means that if we continue and have our x1 particular integral, a function of t, which is 1 over d plus 2. d minus 1. Into 1 minus d. Plus d squared minus d cubed plus dot 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 into minus 4t plus 2 x1 particular integral Right, so let's write this one. D plus two. Okay, we're just also practicing how to deal with the d operator. Okay, this one multiplies one. Okay, if you now differentiate this whole thing with respect to well, differentiating four t plus two, the derivative of the two is zero, and that is minus four. Okay, obviously if you differentiate first, the first derivative is minus four, the second derivative is gonna produce a zero and so on. And this is what we achieve. So it means that x one Particular integral of t which is d minus one. So which is six minus four t. And then now we do the same. This one in view of the Taylor series. The Taylor series is going to be one divided by one minus D. It's always one first, 
So it becomes one plus D. So now because there's a minus, then every term has like a plus here in the sum, in the um, infinite series. So, which means that we have X one particular integral function of T. Okay, if this one now we want it to be like this, we want it to be one minus D. So we can factor out the negative and do whatever we like. This negative is gonna make this one 40 minus six. Let me write like this first. All right, so it's gonna make that one one divided by one minus D. 4t minus 6. Okay. So which means 1 over d plus 2. Now we have this one using that one. It's 1 plus d plus d squared plus d cubed. And then we have 4d minus 4t minus 6. Okay. Now we let the operator operate on this linear expression. These being d plus 2. Um okay, these times one is just 4t minus 6. Okay, the first derivative of the 4t minus 6 is just going to be 4. The second derivative of these is going to be 0, like so, and so on. This is 1 over d plus 2. 4. 4t minus 2. Okay. This is what we get. Now we're just left with this one, so we must just transform it to look like that one. So I'm going to just divide the board here. And you're going to have x1, x1 particular integral as a function of t. At this point, you can just pull out 2 from the denominator, giving us 1 half into 1 out of 1 plus d out of 2. which is 4t minus 2. x1 particular integral of t. We have 1 half. So we're using that formula, but now here it is a plus, so the signs alternate. So it's going to be y no, 1 minus d over 2 plus d over 2 squared minus d over 2 u cubed, which is 4t minus 2. So it is 1 half. Okay, multiply this by that, which is 4t minus 2. Then if you, here you have minus 1 half, so the first derivative is 4t minus 2. We saw that the second derivative of this is going to be 0, so 
can close. Okay. So, which is X1? P, P. Okay, let's just uh, deal with uh, this. Let's deal with the inside. What is inside the parenthesis? Like there is a 4T, then there is minus 2T, which is 2T. 4T minus 2T, which is 2T. Then you have minus 2 plus 1. Minus 2 plus 1. Minus 1. So, what is then the particular integral here? Okay. Let me see what we have got here. Okay, I made a mistake here. Okay, because when you find the first derivative here, it must just be four only. Must just be four only. So if minus half the fifth derivative is just going to be four, but I wrote many things. Yeah. And then you close. So it's going to have an effect on. Okay, let me see here. So, yeah, you have this. So you have 4t minus 2t minus, rather minus 2 minus 2, which is minus 4. like so. And therefore the result is that x1 is the particular integral of t is twice t minus two. Okay, so we got the particular integral, but we also got the complementary function, and hence we have the general solution. Hence, the general solution is given by the general solution i want to say first the general solution for x1 just say that because we have two variables like x1, x2. So the general solution for x1 is given by x1t, which okay. which is x1 is a function of t, which is x1, which is the complementary function of, of t plus x1, the particular integral of t which is x1 of t. Okay, so we remember that this one is C1 e to the minus twice t, C2 e to the minus t plus C3, according to the roots of the complementary of the auxiliary equation, 
E to the T, then you have, okay? This is actually the complementary function. And we have seen that the particular integral is twice T minus two. Now we find, now we find um, x2 a function of t because we've already got x1. But we note that we are done, obviously, please. Uh, from one, we have. Okay, so we have the equation one. What is the equation one? We remind um, ourselves. Okay, this is the equation one, which is actually exactly this one here. d squared plus one into x1. We just uh, solve for x2 from it. So we're going to write that one down straight away. d squared plus one. So here we're going to have d squared plus one, x one minus two d x two, which is equal to twice t. Okay, that is equation one as it is, but we need to now use one of the equations and one of them, these are just like Smaltz's equations. So we need to use this one, but we want to solve for x2. So to solve for x2, we make um, dx2 the subject of this equation. And making dx2, we have uh, dx2, which is exactly the same as one half, then they take this one to the right, etc. So it becomes one half d squared plus one x one. Then there is this one goes to the other side, and this is minus that. So you have this here. Okay. Now we do substitution into that and we find uh, the derivative, etc. Okay, so call this one equation something, A, and call this one equation B, and then proceed to say substitute A into B. So we have this um, right. Remember that is x one. You put this long thing. C one e to the minus that. C two e to the that. C three e to the t. T minus that. Okay. Right. We have this one now, and then we have minus two T. So 
dx2. We want to solve for x2 out of this. So what do we achieve here? So we, we will first allow the d squared to proceed and differentiate everything here. So, but to differentiate twice. First, it's going to be minus 2, and then it's going to be 4. So it's going to be 4c1e to the minus 2t. Differentiate twice, it's going to be minus 1, 1. So it's going to be c2e to the minus t. And then next here, this one is just the of e twice, doesn't change. e to the t. And then now, obviously, we proceed. We look at this other one here. So this is only e. Then this one here is going to be 0, 0. OK, because we're doing twice. Right, first time is going to be 2, and then the next time is going to be 0. So this is going to be 0. So d squared has already done its, its, its job. We just now to just multiply everything by 1. We're keeping the half outside, so it's just going to become c1 e to the minus 2t, c2 e to the minus t, c3 e to the t, 2t minus 2. So we kept the half outside and the minus 2t was um, just sitting uh, over there. And then now, we proceed to, OK, this is a 4. Now, in view of this thing here, Any like terms here, there's a C1, C2, C3, and there's another C1, C2, C3. And then we have this one is actually a twice two. So, which is twice t so it's going to be twice t which is dx2 okay if you have the 4 c1 is going to be 5 c1 e to the minus 2t then you have the C2, there are two of them. Uh, okay, so let's just check that there's no, uh, there's no mistake there. There are five of them, okay. It appears that there's a C2 there and there's a C2 there. There are two of them, let's just write that one down. Yes, 2C2, e to the minus t. Then the C3s, there are also two of them. C3e to the t. Okay, we're done with the C3 now, and then you have the twice t minus 2 minus 2t. Two, Um, okay, I need to clarify that we made, we divided through by two here, so this one's supposed to be one. Supposed to be one. So, we divided through by two, but yeah, this is supposed to be just minus two here. 
Okay, we're going to forget. So, see here, see there. Also, this one, see here. See here. See here, see there. So, yeah. So, which means that at that point we have dx2. We allow the half to distribute everything and through the brackets, giving us 5 over 2 c1 e to the minus 2t plus c2 e to the minus t plus c3 e to the t plus t minus 1 minus t, giving us dx2 is 5 out of 2 c1 e to the minus 2t plus c2 e to the minus t plus c3 e to the t minus 1. The t minus t boils down to zero. Okay, we're done. Now we are just learning also the d operator method and how it works. But after at this point, now we just need to make x to the subject. So to make x to the subject, we perform, we sort of multiply by the inverse operator which means that we shall have x2 is a function of t, 1 over d, which is 5 out of 2, c1 e to the minus 2t, c2 e to the minus t, c3 e to the t minus 1. So, we sort of multiply by the inverse operator, or we take the inverse operator, we take the inverse operator as sort of the right mathematical terminology, because it's an operator, it's like a function. So we take the inverse operator both sides, like if you could take the inverse tan function, inverse sine, inverse cosine. Okay, once we have these, then we integrate this. One of the D means we are integrating. So if you integrate now, we integrate this one with respect to t. So this one is going to produce minus one half. So it's going to be, be, uh, actually become minus one quarter c1 e to the minus two t. And then now this one is just going to produce a minus. So a minus c2 e to the minus t. This one is going to produce a c3 e to the t. This one is going to produce a minus t. So, that is x2 that we got. So, we got x2 to be this, but we need to remember x1. x1 is this. So, what do we have here? We have that x1 is this guy here. Okay, this one. X2 is this one here. So we have X1 and X2. And therefore we are done. Because in these are the answers is required. Because the question was solve the system using or by using the elimination method, the operator method. And you use the elimination 
we first solved for x1 and then next we solved for x2. And we found the auxiliary equation, the complementary function, and we found a particular integral, etc. Okay, we're gonna learn more about this. Right, so we are going on to solve more problems. The next uh, thing we shall discuss is this particular type of method where we need to be in a position to solve these particular type of problems. Right, so for instance, now solve the system, why is there a unique solution to the above system? Right, first and foremost, this one is actually an ordinary differential equation, which is a matrix equation. So we're going to deal with this one. So to solve this one now, what we do is uh, we take this matrix here. And we say zero minus lambda, one, zero, zero, zero minus lambda, one, two, one, minus two minus lambda. Okay, so we have this. Okay. Ideally, we take the determinant of this normally, of this matrix, but obviously first we find the matrix and then we take the determinant. Okay, so... We can just simplify. Okay. My goodness me, this one. Two, one. Minus two, minus lambda. Okay, using cofactor expansion. We also set a couple of signs with this, like, I just set a plus here, a minus, then a plus. So, we're going to have minus lambda. Okay, if we cover this row in that column, we're left with minus lambda 1, 1 minus 2 minus lambda. And then you have minus 1, which is 0, 2, 1 minus 2 minus lambda. which is minus that, multiply this with that, which is exactly lambda squared plus two lambda minus one. This is minus two. So you multiply out. So, which is minus lambda cubed, minus two lambda squared, plus lambda plus two. Here you can factor out, factor out lambda, negative lambda squared. Factorize this, so it becomes lambda plus two. And then we have lambda plus two. And then this is actually lambda plus two into, you can write it as one minus lambda squared or minus lambda squared plus one.
right so at this point uh, we obviously need to equate uh, this to zero and then we have uh, lambda equals minus two lambda squared equals one which means lambda is plus or minus one So for lambda, equals minus one. We need to get the eigenvectors. So these are the, what you call the eigenvalues. Okay, let's get the eigenvectors. So for lambda uh, equals this one, the eigenvectors now. So we shall have this one here. It's gonna just become one, one, zero, zero, one, one, two, one, uh, minus one. And then you do V1, V2. Okay, now let's write this one on the other side. It is exactly this one, so you note it. It is one, one, zero, zero, one, one, two, one, minus one. So it is exactly one, one, zero. Okay, it looks like an 11, that one. So it's one, one, zero. One, one, zero. Zero, one, one. Two, one, minus one. Which is V1, V2, V3. Zero, zero, zero. One, one, zero. Zero, one, one. Two, one, minus one. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, you write the augmented matrix because you want to get the, the eigenvector. So I might not finish this question because it's a bit long. I might finish it tomorrow. So you obviously here you have one one zero zero root two minus two row one. So it becomes uh, minus two times that you add is zero minus two times that is minus two you add is minus one minus two times that you add is minus one minus two times that you add is zero. Right. So, we have this, row one minus row two. <laughs> so you have this, row three plus row two. So, okay, we have this. So this one is V1, V1 minus V3 is zero, V2 plus V3 is zero. And this means V1 equals V3, this means V2 equals minus v3 
the eigenvector associated with this is the v1, v2, v3 vector. So V1 is V3, V2 is minus V3, V3 is V3. V1, V2, V3. Right, so, um, okay. <laughs> V3, so it's one minus one, one. And then, and the eigenvector for lambda equals minus one, the eigenvector is one minus one, one. Hence, x one of t is c one, one minus one, which is e to the minus t. It's sort of a solution. It's one of the solutions x1 t associated with lambda equals minus one. Okay, let's just put in a little bit of energy and, and, and try to finish this off quickly. Okay, so lambda, a couple of values of lambda, like this also lambda equals minus two because we got the values of lambda from here. Minus two is, is 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 there. So associated with that one, we're gonna have we're gonna have the, the following. Okay, the that matrix that we got. So I'm not really gonna waste a lot of time. It's gonna be two one zero. Um, there's the lambda matrix uh, two zero two one, and then two one zero. Um, so this is W1, W2, W3. And then it's zero, zero, zero. Right, to save a lot of time, I know that we know how to row reduce. So we'd say therefore that this one, like we saw the row reduction, reduce Rachel on form would be W1, W2, W3 is the same as uh, 1 minus 2, 4. And this gives us a solution. Okay, so for, I'm going to write the solution. For lambda equals 1, there's also this matrix here. So for lambda equals one, the matrix is from that lambda matrix is minus one, one, zero, zero minus one, one, two, one minus three. Okay, in any order, I would I would call this one u one, u two, u three. It doesn't really matter. And this is zero, zero, zero. This is U1, U2, U3. So at the end of the day, which is 1, 1, 1. Okay. And therefore, this means that, yeah. Let me use a different color. So it means that if I use red, just to make sure it's very different, um, you would have therefore the solution. So I'm gonna call this one 
x q of t. And x q of t is going to become c2 1 1 1 e to the t. x3 of t. c3. Okay. So you, it's this one, the vector. So it's 1 minus 2, 4 e to the minus 2t. Right. Okay, now we then say hence. Hence the solutions. And the solutions are, now we're going to have x of t, which is equal to x1 of t plus x2 of t plus x3 of t. And what is this? Right, so this here is exactly C1. One minus one, one. E to the minus T plus C2, one, one, one. E to the T. Plus C3 into 1 minus 2, 4 times E to the minus 2T. Obviously, this is true where, where C1, C2, C3 are arbitrary constants. Okay, obviously we're trying to familiarize, familiarize ourselves with the actual, the actual methods here. Um, or arbitrary, um, I can see the time. That's why I'm rounding off. Arbitrary constants, just need to sum it up. Right, where the C1, C2, and C3 become arbitrary constants. Okay, so, In view in view of the initial condition right in view of the initial condition which is this one x zero which is one zero one. which is one, zero, one. And if X zero is one, zero, one, it would therefore mean that at this point, what we have is that T zero. So we have one minus one, one. Plus C2, 1, 1, 1. Plus C3, 1 minus 2, 4. So, which means that you have C1. Right, so what we have is therefore C1 plus C2 plus C3. C1 plus C2 plus C3 is 1. Minus C1 
plus C2 minus 2C3 is zero. C1, C2, C4, C3. C1, C2 plus 4, C3 is equal to is equal to one. Okay, obviously here we're just, uh, okay, this one is easy because the roots are all different. We shall just talk about root vectors as well in cases when the actual roots are different. So, obviously this implies that C1 is one half and C2 becomes the same value or has the same value and C3 becomes zero. Okay, you can to solve this is all matrices. You can just solve this using um, uh, what we call the gauss jordan elimination method. And as we used, uh, after we use the gauss jordan elimination method, uh, I'm going to write the final answer to this. So now the final solution is as follows. So hence, which is Xt. Okay, so you come here now, like so. You substitute everything there. You substitute here the C1, which is half, and C2, which is also one half. Um, and then C3 is, is going to become zero. So you're going to have one half into one minus one, one e to the minus t, c2 is one half, one, 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 e to the t, like this. And then c3 is gonna become zero. Right. Right, so obviously at this point, uh, um, this is the solution. Is uh, okay because I want to also mention that in view of theorem, we're gonna discuss uh, these theorems in detail tomorrow. In view of theorem two point two nine, we have three different we have three different eigenvalues okay we have three different eigenvalues right because we have three different eigenvalues uh, we have three different eigenvalues Then X dot X dot, which is AX, the original differential equation in matrix form with the initial value, this one here, initial value, which is X sub zero. This system has a unique has a unique um has a unique solution that system has a unique solution and now we have found the unique solution and this is uh, the unique solution okay this is the unique solution and we are done. I think, yeah, I must thank you for joining us today. And I can see the time has elapsed a little bit. I was just trying to raise to get this one concluded. There are more things I'm going to discuss tomorrow, everything that pertains to the exam. There are also other very obscure notions we're going to discuss tomorrow um, as well, because, uh, yeah, there are several things I'm going to discuss tomorrow. So I'm going to review them tomorrow um, for the material. But exam oriented stuff, um, yeah. So I'm going to pause the video in the next couple of minutes. Uh,
Yeah, but yeah, we'll talk a lot more tomorrow. So what is very important is just making sure that this is just clear and uh, if repeated uh, these questions, you can be able to um, tackle them. Okay, so yeah, thanks for joining us um, today. Um, it's my plan to see you tomorrow at what time? At, um, it's my plan to see you tomorrow at half four. So you let me know if half four is ideal so that we look at some other things that are obscure um, and other solutions to other differential equations using different methods, the um, root vectors and other things in, in, the, in the event of even repeated roots here. Okay, so we shall, we shall see that. Um, all right, yeah, so thanks a lot. I'll see you tomorrow at half four, okay. Thanks, thanks a lot and goodbye.